What's going on YouTube family? Today we're going to be talking about should you be buying a salvage title car in 2024? Now this is a question I get asked all the time. Should I buy a salvage title vehicle? Now I'm going to give you some of the pros along with some of the bad things and kind of give you an open-minded view of how you should look at salvage cars. Also today I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour. I'm walking through my place. We got our new studio that we're still setting up, so I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a different things we're gonna have lined up, but let's go ahead and get into what is a salvage title. Now, if your car is in an accident, uh, maybe a fire, flood, vandalism, theft, if your car is insured, the insurance company, nine times out of 10, will total it out if it reaches a certain threshold. If it's too expensive, too costly to repair or replace, they will total out the car. And once they do this, this will actually issue a salvage title for your vehicle. Now, you can go ahead and buy this car back directly from the insurance company, or you can go to like Copar or IAA and purchase one of these cars at auction. Now, I'm gonna give a big disclaimer. There are a few good cars you can get, but there are a lot of bad ones. So first we're gonna go with the easy ones, which is like theft and vandalism. I've gotten cars that were theft, where literally were stolen, they were gone for two weeks, insurance company paid out, and then we picked them back up. Nothing wrong with them. They got the keys, everything else. There was just, you know, maybe they did a little off-roading, something like that. So you can get, actually get a really good deal for a low cost. Now, those ones I don't mind. Also, vandalism. I bought a Mercedes S-Class. It had some keying on the side. Some girl was mad at her boyfriend for cheating or something, keyed the car all up. But since it had a pearl paint job, they salvaged out and totaled out the whole car. And so I was able to buy it and I just wrapped it and then turned around and resold it. Now let's get into the ones where I tell people no matter what, do not buy. And there's a lot of reasons why, because when you have a salvage car, you have to rebuild it and inspect it to get it issued a rebuilt title. This is how you can insure it and get it back on the road, which I'll go into here in a little bit. So the two you should always stay away from are fires and floods. I don't care what you say. Oh, it's only up to the bumper line or it's only here. It's a fresh water flood. First, salt water corrodes everything really, really fast. Stay away from salt water. Fresh water, especially if it's groundwater, it's never fresh. It's usually bringing up some sort of either oil, dirt, or any other type of corrosive material into your vehicle. So I've seen so many freshwater floods that after not a month, not six months, but probably about a year to two years afterwards, start having major issues with electrical because of the corrosiveness of the dirt and soil that are brought up with it. I guarantee you, just go outside, pour a puddle, throw a towel in there and pick it back up and pour it in a glass of water. You're gonna see all kinds of dirt and contaminants. And dirt is an actual conductive thing. It has bits of metal in it, bits of glass. It will mess up your electronic harnesses, your modules, everything else. I see it all the time. That's why you see a lot of people, they'll sell these second-handed rebuilt cars with the flood title, but tell you it's fresh water because they know in you know, anywhere from a year to two years, you're gonna start having problems with it. And it's gonna be nothing but issues and lots of problems. But that's why I recommend staying away from those ones. Um, next, we're gonna be talking about are like accidents and you know just regular damage ones. Now, I got a car right here sorry it's gonna be a little bright but i got this car it's it's got a rebuilt title it was in an accident and then now it's in another accident now the reason why i tell people these used to be good deals is because we used to get these things really really cheap so let's say you want to buy a wreck car like this we used to be able to get them for about a little bit less than maybe 40 to 50 percent of its real value so if you wanted to buy let's say a brand new nissan sentra you could buy a wreck like this having some minor issues Let's say you pay the retail on it's twenty-two thousand. You buy it for maybe eight to nine thousand dollars. You put two to three thousand dollars into it. So for a half price, you have a brand new zero-mile vehicle that you can drive for the next two years. But what's happened is the retail value of some of these salvage cars are literally the same price as a clean title car. When the shortage came out, people were losing their minds. We had people paying retail prices for wrecked and damaged garbage like this, and it blew my mind. We even had some banks that were still financing these cars way over LTV just because they had a shortage, they needed cars. So I'll get into this here in a little bit along with the financing, but the reason why I tell people you wanna stay away from salvage cars, especially ones that have basically been built since the pandemic is because there are so many YouTubers, not to knock into YouTubers because they do give a lot of information, you know, buy this car, fix it for a few bucks and make a bunch of money. The problem is, is I know if I get this car and it has a lot of front end support damage, uh, core support and the airbag is blown, I'm gonna have to cut that core support, weld in a new one, 
make sure that it's structurally strong and replace the airbag. I guarantee you 70% of the cars, all you gotta do is go to Facebook Marketplace and see this, they'll have a rebuilt title, but the airbags will be missing. If you look underneath the hood, it looks like hammer dog shit. Instead of them actually cutting off the core support, they just pull it out, straighten it, add Bondo, whatever else. It doesn't work that way. This is a structural part of your frame. It is designed to not only hold the parts of your car, but if you get into an accident, it's designed to actually take the impact to absorb that energy. So basically your face doesn't smash into the dashboard. But when these guys start Mickey Mousing this, and there's YouTubers like, oh, you can just buy it and use it, come along with a tree and pull it out and you'll have no problems. And that's the issue we have is people are teaching this crap, which don't get me wrong, if you have a project and you're trying to learn, learn that, but don't do this as a business. And that was the issue. We had all these people showing up to auctions I've never seen before, buying salvage cars like this, with I know they don't have a shop and know they don't have a facility, literally Mickey Mousing stuff and trying to fix it up. And all it does is wind up costing people like myself tons of money because now what I would pay for that car, let's say it's worth 20,000, I would pay maybe $7,000 for it. But these guys would pay 15, 14, $16,000 for cars like this that are just simply not worth it. And what this did is took all the fun and the financial aspects you can make out of the vehicle and the money you would save completely gone out of the vehicle. And that's what kind of kills me. And so now, you know, I'm showing you guys on YouTube that I want to get you guys into buying cars, whether it's at an auction for a dealer, if it's an insurance auction like Copart, because I want people to learn more about the cars and learn to be prepared. Now, one of the other things that they're not gonna tell you is the fact that when you try to basically put this thing back on the road, some states have very strict inspection rules. You have to go to a third-party body shop, they have to inspect it, make sure that you actually did an insurance quality type of repair. And this is where a lot of cars wind up getting kicked back or going to different states to get uh, a rebuilt title issued because there are a lot of states that don't care. Like you literally just bring it in there, make sure it passes emissions. Some states don't even have emissions. They'll just say, oh, look, I rebuilt it. Here's some uh, receipts for parts. It's good to go back on the road. They'll drive it through some lane. They'll then check it, say, okay, it's good to go, and they'll let it go, which is scary because I've seen some really bad, we're talking zip ties, um, wood screws. I've actually seen pieces of wood braced up in the front for a bumper support because the whole front end was completely gone. And the guy, I don't know if he was a carpenter or what, but the whole front end was actually built with wood. And this is what you're going to see out there in the rebuilt and salvage market. So if you're going to spend a lot of your hard-earned money, you don't want to buy something that somebody else Mickey Mouse that was kind of a half-assed project because it will come back and bite you in the ass. I mean, you could drive all over any major city and I guarantee you'll see these Mickey Mouse cars driving on the road, especially if you're on the freeway and you see a car kind of driving at an angle and you could see its front tires and its back tires are sticking out separately. That means because the frame was not correctly straightened. So now it's got a road walk. So it's going to be rolling down the street kind of sideways. Doesn't seem like much, but you're burning more tires, you're having more issues. And so even though the car looks good today, you're gonna have much more issues with your suspension, with uneven tire wear, your ABS module won't work, your uh, trash control will have issues when you're at a high speed rate. That's why I tell a lot of people, it's not worth it, especially buying a secondhand rebuild car because we don't know what the condition of it is. On top of that, I've had a lot of banks that flat out told me they will no longer finance rebuilt or salvaged cars because they've had so many problems with them. They give full money for them and then when they take them back to the auction, dealers like myself, I will not pay retail. I'll pay close to 50% for a salvage car. I won't go any higher. And when they see this, they realize they're losing all this money so they don't want to deal with it. In some of the cars, I had a bank here in Vegas, they had to literally take them to the scrapper because the cars were so unsafe. Like one of the suspension control arms was literally tack welded on with a bolt through it. And if you know what tack welding means, it means it was just two spots that was welded on there that was actually holding on the lower control arm, which is absolutely scary because they didn't want to spend thousands of dollars buying the right uh, subframe and building it correctly. But that's what you get with these guys that are doing this stuff in their backyard, trying to uh, flip these cars. On top of that, your insurance costs. They're gonna charge you for a clean title car value of your monthly insurance, but guess what happens when you actually get into an accident. You're probably gonna get anywhere from 40 to maybe, if you're lucky, 60% of your vehicle value. So right from there, you're having massive insurance costs. And on top of that, I believe, I don't know if it was State Farm, Allstate, and a few other ones, they all flat out said they are no longer doing any type of salvage, rebuilt history vehicles. Even if they have like lemon law or flood damage, they're considering everything that's been ever told out by an insurance company or a major issue, too much of a liability. 
And so as we move forward, there's more and more reasons why not to buy them, which hopefully will bring the price down, which is the main reason why I tell people to stay away from rebuilt cars and salvage titles because you can't get them for a deal. When you try to go sell it, that's when you're going to have all these issues because think about it. You can't get insurance. You can't get a loan for it. And we don't know how it's going to be repaired. How are you going to get your investment back? If you drove for two years, you bought it for $30,000. Let's say it was a Yukon Denali. It was worth 50. You paid 30, got a smoking deal on it. In two years, you're probably going to get half of what you spent. That's just the way the market is right now. And so as we move forward, you know, the market's going to get a lot more crazier. People are going to get more discerning when it comes to buying these vehicles. And so I think that buying a salvage car in 2024 is really not worth it. Now, sorry for the echo. I'm actually walking into my shop slash studio. So I've been working on this for a while. We we're supposed to have this up almost a month ago. I was gonna do a new video about you know building my shop in my actual house, which is cool. But we got all the stuff done. We're gonna be putting up the hexagon lights. I got the flooring in, all that other fun stuff. And it's all flat black. It's gonna look really cool once all the lighting is done. So another reason why I'm building this studio, it's almost gonna be like a movie studio, is because every time I talk about a subject, about a vehicle, something like that, I wanna bring it here and show it to you guys. Don't get me wrong, the sitting talking head videos are fun. I'm doing really well. Those are still getting 60, 70,000 views. But I think physically showing you guys how we can build these cars and what we could do would be much more, I guess, exciting. And I wanna level up, especially now that we're gonna be breaking here in the next few weeks, probably 600,000 subscribers. On top of that, we got a really cool SEMA build. We're doing something with Copart. It's gonna be absolutely crazy. I can't wait to show you guys. If you guys watch my Instagram, I go there, it's Lucky Lopez. I have a bunch of crazy stuff that we're dropping out there. So if you're going to SEMA, please come check us out. We're gonna have a crazy, insane build for that, which is gonna be a lot of fun. Also, once I finish this, my goal is to have, you know, students and other people that wanna learn about the car business can come by. I have a training spot, we have classrooms, I have a podcast thing that we're setting up over here. A lot of cool stuff, but I will do a shop tour and a house review here in a little bit. Um, we're still working on it, having some issues with the landlord and I don't know, we're trying to buy this place, so we'll see if the guy will actually go through with it. But I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, please take your time. If you're thinking about buying a salvage car, double check it, make sure that it's actually done correctly. If you are gonna buy one and please stay away from all flood vehicles. Also, there are different types of titles. There are salvage, there's rebuilt, there's reconstructive, destructive, parts only, export only. Only get rebuilt, and then if you have a shop, get a salvage. Do not touch any of the other ones. I don't care what your friends say, and you could switch the title. I've had so many people, every time I make this video, I can get a, a, a parts title back into a regular car title. You can't anymore. Now that everybody has ELT, which is electronic transfer title, as soon as you register it, another state's gonna flag it, they're gonna kick it back. I've seen it with, my buddy bought a Lamborghini Huracan, it was export only. He went all the way to Alabama because somebody said they could push it through, paid the guy like four grand, they got it registered. Within about two months, uh, he got a letter from Dan B saying they're suspending his plates and everything else because the car is not legally allowed to be on the United States roads. So. So make sure you stay tuned. We have a lot of really great, fun educational videos. And once the studio is done, we're gonna have a bunch of fun videos for you guys as well. So we'll see you next time.